Hello friends and welcome to today's video. Today's video is about challenging myself to walk 25,000 steps per day for seven days. Throughout this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the lessons that I learned or reaffirmed during the week. And I will also be sharing with you my physical changes, which for me meant measuring my weight at the start and the end of the week. Just from right off the get-go here, in case this is something important to you, I choose to not share my specific weight on this channel. I'm just not comfortable doing that, but I will share with you my starting weight and my ending weight. This is day one of deciding that I'm going to walk 25,000 steps a day for seven days. I decided I wanted to challenge for myself. This seemed like a good one because, uh, well, it is a little bit weather dependent. I can always walk inside as well or on a treadmill. And uh, yeah, I'm about 40 minutes into my first walk for the day and feeling good. On the first day, I got a long walk in early in the morning, about 15,000 steps, and the rest of the day felt quite easy. I feel like one of the lessons that was reaffirmed for me this week was the importance of getting my exercise in early in the day. You may be different, but I don't tend to get super jazzed about exercise. I love the way it feels when I have done it, but the longer in the day I put it off, the more excuses I tend to have and the less likely I will do it. In fact, for this challenge, I did the best when I got my shoes on and I was out the door before my brain really even clued into what I was doing. And the other important aspect for me of doing my longest walk early in the morning, it might be a little silly, but I tend to drink a lot of water through the day. So if I'm going to go for a long walk without the need for a lot of bathroom breaks, I'm gonna have to do it first thing in the morning. And bathroom breaks are especially hard lately when most of the coffee shops or places in town are not allowing customers to use their washrooms. So for all of those reasons, my best days were the days I got a long walk in early in the morning. Hey guys, so today is day two of my 25,000 steps a day. Last night I was feeling like my shins were hurting a little bit, but other than that I was fine. And then this morning I woke up and I was feeling really tired. Uh, I hope you can hear this over the wind. And it was really, really gray and rainy out this morning. So I thought, okay, today I will do my 25,000 steps indoors. And I started doing that and I got about 4,000 steps in and then it cleared up and it's a gorgeous day out. So I've gone for a walk and I'm in my t-shirt. This is so early in Ottawa for it to be this nice out. So I'm just gonna continue on for a long walk and uh, enjoy this weather. I'm a little worried I might get sunburnt, which is crazy. The second day I think was the best that I felt all week. Feeling the sunshine on my skin, seeing the ice floating down the river, I could just feel spring. I live somewhere where we definitely get all four seasons, and I think it's important to get outside and feel connected to those seasons. Sunshine in the spring, like on this day, definitely helps my mood, but so does feeling that lazy heat of summer, the crunching of the leaves under your feet in the fall, and pushing through snow in the winter. Walking is the perfect way to connect with the world and nature around you. It is day three of my 25,000 steps a day, and I feel like today is going to be the hardest. Now, first of all, because I didn't get a morning walk in this morning, um, and I think I've currently walked 200 steps, um, and it is mid-morning. It is pouring rain outside, and so I'm gonna have to do all of my walking inside, and. I didn't sleep super well last night, so I'm just feeling a bit tired. Body-wise, I felt a little stiff when I woke up this morning, but like that's kind of worked itself out now. Um, so I might end up doing or trying out one of those like online videos on YouTube that I've seen every once in a while come up in my feed that's like 
follow along and you'll get 5,000 steps or 10,000 steps. But the other thing I like to do is just put on a YouTube video that's like 15 minutes long or half hour or whatever and just walk in my place. I do sometimes also jog in place, but what I found is that I will often, when I'm running in place inside, run on my toes and I don't tend to wear shoes and it's actually really hard on my arches after a little while. So I may end up putting shoes on, although I hate wearing shoes in the house. Um, and I might just end up doing some walking. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see how today goes. Day three really drove home for me the importance of flexibility in exercise. As I walked back and forth in my living room hundreds of times, I realized how much I just wanted to get onto my bike or go swim in the pool as my movement for the day. Either one of those would have been much more enjoyable. I've heard more and more lately about intuitive eating, but I really think there's a place for intuitive movement as well, doing what feels good. There is a time and a place for exercise programs for sure, but if you're just focusing on getting more active and getting more movement, do what you love. I find that also feels a little bit more like playing when we're young. You're not worried about doing a specific kind of movement, you're just having fun and doing what feels good for your body. Hey guys, uh, I'm filming in the car, so please forgive the weird angle and how I look right now. I have just finished my main walk for the day. I decided to drive somewhere new to get a bit of different scenery. And uh, yeah, I'm at just under 19,000 steps right now, which is good because it means I don't have to think about it too much the rest of the day. Uh, my plan was I was going to get myself a specialty Starbucks coffee because two days ago when it was so nice and warm out, I had a vanilla sweet cream cold brew and it was so tasty, like so tasty. So I looked up the Starbucks menu and I was going to get a, it might have been a vanilla sweet cream nitro. I just wanted to see what the difference was. Uh, but when I actually got out and started walking, it is just around freezing today and there's also a wind, so it was quite cold out. I ended up getting myself a uh, skinny vanilla latte. I like having these sort of rewards for myself on my walks of getting myself like a coffee I wouldn't normally get for myself. So I'm going to head home and uh, I'll probably have to do a little bit of walking back and forth in my condo uh, while I watch, you know, a TV show or something, but generally I'm in good shape for the rest of the day. One of the lessons from day four was that it can be really helpful to tie exercise to some kind of reward. I follow the WW Weight Watchers plan, and one of the topics we were talking about in our meeting this week was about bundling, putting something that maybe you have to do or you don't super enjoy doing together with something that you do enjoy. And for me, going for a walk and having a destination really makes me want to go for that walk. And the destination, for me, I've been gifted a number of Starbucks gift cards lately, so going and having a destination be a Starbucks was really motivating to me. I chose different routes to different Starbucks and tried different Starbucks drinks as my reward. As a bonus, tying back to something that I said earlier, I did find a Starbucks that had a washroom that was available. So later on in the week when I was planning a really long walk, I made that part of my trip so that I knew I could use a washroom along the way. Day five was hard. I got out early, but I was feeling kind of moody. It was gray and it was cold, and I just wasn't super happy about it, and also didn't do a lot of filming. But my thought for day five is that you don't have to get sweaty to get good exercise in, because the mood that I was in on day five, if my exercise for the day was going to be something super high intensity or something I had to get really pumped for, I would have not have been in the mood to do it. Walking is like, okay, I can just put one foot in front of the other and go. And during this week, every day except for one, I burned over 1,000 active calories on my Apple Watch. So nothing I did was high impact. I didn't jog or anything. This was strictly walking all week, and I still got a lot of great exercise. Never feel like just walking isn't enough.
Day six, I did a loop around the urban areas of my city. I love walking in urban areas. I find the time passes really fast for me and I just love exploring. I find walking in a city, you notice things you wouldn't notice if you were driving or jogging or cycling because it just slows you down and you're much more part of the environment. Do be safe though. So I mentioned that on the route I chose to do on day six, I did a big loop across two bridges between two provinces. And on one side, there's two ways you can go, either on the main street or there is a lovely pathway down by the water. However, I was doing this walk early in the morning and also fairly early in the season. So I didn't know how busy or populated that path was going to be. I made the decision to take the main road because I didn't want to find myself isolated on a path that I didn't really know very well. So explore your city, but be smart. Day seven was the final day and it was lovely, sunny, just the perfect temperature and light breeze for walking and I really enjoyed it. I will sometimes listen to podcasts or music when I am out walking. However, by coincidence on like day one of this journey, my AirPods were acting up a little bit. So I ended up doing all of this walking without having anything I was listening to. And it's something that I would really recommend. Overall, over this last year, I have been really plugged in. I've been in front of a lot of screens, I've had a lot of internet and media and videos and Netflix and Crave and all of the things, because it's really mostly the only thing I could do to stay busy and entertained. But I would really recommend walking without listening to anything. Walking can be a form of meditation and probably a very good one for people who can't really jive with the idea of sitting and trying to empty their mind for, you know, minutes at a time. I find when I'm walking, I'm a little bit distracted by my environment, but the thoughts just go through my head. It's a really great time to think and process and just think through my daily life, my plans for the future, things that are going on. It just really gave me a chance to reflect. And it gave me a chance to connect and appreciate the sounds around me. The water in the river, the sound of the geese and the birds. There's one part on uh, one of the walks that I've done a couple of times that is over a boardwalk and the sound of my feet on the wooden boardwalk is just lovely. And my absolute favorite are people saying hello to me when I'm out walking and they are out walking. It may sound small, but for somebody like me who has been living on my own over the last year, working from home, living at home, maybe seeing my sister and her family once or twice a week, that hello from another person while I'm out walking may be the only in-person conversation that I will have for the entire day. And it just means the world to me. It makes my day. My final thought, I'm not gonna continue walking 25,000 steps a day. It's a bit much and it's a bit time consuming. But for all the benefits that I've mentioned, I think I will try to start my day as much as possible with a good walk. I'm thinking like 10,000 steps a day. At the same time, I will be flexible and choose to use my bike or the pool if it's not gonna be an enjoyable walk. And now that you've listened to all of my reflections, deep thoughts with Melissa Joyce, let's talk about weight results. I will mention that during this week, I wasn't tracking calories or tracking points. I was eating generally healthy, although there were a few days where I didn't stay in the healthy zone very much. And I'm going to give you two numbers. The first is total weight loss, and the second is weight loss accounting for an average over seven days. I track my weight in happy scale, and happy scale will give you each day a weight that is the average of the seven days before. I find using that smooths out any of the highs or lows. At the start of the week of walking 25,000 steps per day, I was feeling a little bloated, so my total weight lost over the week was 3.4 pounds. If I look at the average that I lost over the week, smoothing out those highs and lows, I lost 2.4 pounds which is probably closer to my actual results from all the walking. So I hope that you have maybe found something useful in this video. Walking is definitely excellent exercise and for way more reasons than just promoting weight loss.
Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you have enjoyed it, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. But if you also want to follow along on other fitness challenges that I am doing or my Weight Watchers content, please consider subscribing to this channel. I will also mention that at the time of filming this, I have just reached 10,000 subscribers, which is crazy and amazing and I am just so thankful for that. Uh, so thank you if you are subscribed. You are amazing and wonderful and help me reach this fun goal. And if you are not subscribed, please consider doing so so you can add to that number. Thanks again so much you guys and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!